Hello, and welcome to the fourth update video for Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition. For those that have been following our Twitter page, you know that this is the update you've been waiting for. Restored soft shadows, restored post-processing effects, improved controller support, the start of upscaled images, and much more await you in this update. And stick around to the end of the video, where we'll talk about continued prospective goals for the project. So let's jump straight into it. For this update, you will need to download the latest version of the following enhancement packages. The Silent Hill 2 Enhancements module, version 1.5.1700. The Enhanced Edition Essential Files, version 1.1.0. And the FMV Enhancement Pack, version 1.5.0. You can download the latest version of these packages by visiting the installation page of the Enhanced Edition website. Go to the changelog table to see which packages have been updated, click on the appropriate packages link to go to its install step, download the package, and replace any files within the game's directory if prompted. Download links for the latest updated enhancement packages will also be in the video description below. So let's start this update off with a bang by taking a moment to simply showcase restored soft shadows. <laughs> You should rest. Mm. <laughs> so comfy. I'm gonna go look for her. For Laura. I'll be back. And not only are soft shadows restored, but so are the shadow behaviors that go with them. For example, shadow opacities will vary depending on what room you're in, just like the console versions. So when you are in room 312 of the hotel, the shadow opacity will be very light. The same is true for when you meet Maria in the Labyrinth prison cell, as another example. And just like the console versions, when you toggle your flashlight, the shadows will correctly fade in and out. When you turn your flashlight off, the environment made shadows will slowly fade in. And when you turn your flashlight on, the flashlight made shadows will quickly fade in. Oh, and the icing on the cake? The restored soft shadows will always stay the same softness, regardless of how high you set the game's resolution to. In addition to restored soft shadows, we have also restored self shadows for the game. Self shadows is the ability for dynamic objects, such as characters, enemies, and items, to have shadows cast upon them. For example, in the Eddie and Laura Bull and Cutscene you see here, these characters will not have shadows cast upon their bodies. Or, during the final confrontation with the Pyramid Heads, James's head will cast a long shadow over his body. Or, finding Maria dead on her prison bed, James's shadow will cast over her body which also correctly blends the alpha channels in Maria's hair to the shadows that are cast onto the bed underneath her. Mary. But let's talk a little more about shadows and the different shadow types the game uses to avoid any confusion on the matter. Soft shadows are only created and used in areas where the flashlight can be used. 
This is normal behavior for all versions of the game. That means, when you're out in the town during the daytime, James' shadow will not be soft, but instead will use layered shadow pieces to form a shadow, as seen here. Again, this is normal behavior for all versions of the game. However, there are three areas in the game where this type of shadow should be one solid piece, instead of being layered. These areas are... The Observation Deck Angela's Apartment Room and both Eddie boss fight rooms. This update also fixes the shadows for these areas to be one solid piece. To keep the good times rolling, we have also restored intensities for the post-processing effects. This means that the depth of field blur will be blurrier during the beginning cutscene. Mary, could you really be in this town? Motion blur events are restored. and the fake bloom effect in room 312 of the hotel is also restored. Additionally, the game would create a one-frame flicker before any of these special effects would start. We have also addressed this issue, so the flickering no longer happens before any post-processing events occur. Going back to room 312 of the hotel, let's take a moment to go over the various fixes and improvements we've done to the room. We fixed an issue where, if you pull out the PC pause menu, the noise filter and or fake bloom effect would disappear while on the pause screen. We fixed an issue where the subtitles would also receive the bloom effect while in this room. We fixed an issue where the chair's shadow would render incorrectly during the cutscene with Laura here. Let's temporarily disable the shadow improvements to better illustrate. Notice the chair's shadow at this point in the cutscene. You know, the shadow of the chair in James now correctly renders here once more. This update also includes the start of widescreen upscaled images. For this update, enjoy a high resolution main menu and save screens. We will continue work on upscaling the 2D full screen images and hope to release the remaining images in the next update. This will include upscaled memo and riddle images, along with the map images. Speaking of the maps, while we were not able to include upscaled maps for this update, we were able to fix pillar box and errors for them. Previously, the color of the pillar boxes for the maps would vary depending on where you pull up your map. And, Whenever James would transcribe notes onto his map, there would be no pillar boxes at all, so you would see the game world in their place. With this update, we've added a fix to ensure all pillar boxes are always present for the maps, and are always black in color. Additionally, the map markings would float over the pillar boxes. This has also been addressed, and the map markings will now disappear when they reach the pillar boxes. In the next update after this one, we will have the maps properly fill the screen area for widescreen usage. In the meantime, the pillar box fixes should help tremendously with their presentation. We've added further controller support for the game. In the previous update, we restored controller vibration. However, regardless of what vibration intensity you set in the game's options menu, the vibration would always rumble at 100% force. With this update, your vibration intensity selection will correctly change the rumble force of your controller. 
and rejoice controller users as the right joystick functionality is restored for the search camera. With this update, you can now freely move James while manipulating the search camera on a controller, just like how you remembered on the console versions. Use the left joystick and D-pad to move James, and use the right joystick to move the search camera after activating search mode. We've updated the PC mouse cursor for the game. This update was done to match the style of the mouse cursor used for Silent Hill 3 and 4 PC, to keep a visually consistent theme amongst the PC cursors used throughout these titles. The game's options menu will now show the correct resolution you are using, and also prevent you from changing the resolution within this menu, which will crash the game while using the enhancement packages. We've added a feature that will use the best graphics options on each game launch, to ensure effects such as the shadows, fog, and post-processing filters are already enabled for you. The North American Executable now has translated main menu selections for French, German, Italian, and Spanish players. When you select your language in the game's options menu, the main menu selections will automatically update to the appropriately selected language. We fixed the mouse alignment issue with the main menu selection if used in version 1.1 of the North American Executable. If you installed Silent Hill 2 PC to an admin protected directory, such as program files, you must run the game as an administrator in order to save your game progress. We now include a feature that automatically checks if you need to run the game as an administrator, and will bring up the UAC prompt accordingly. If you install the game to a local user directory, this feature will launch the game like normal, and will not ask you if you want to run the game as an administrator. For the single core affinity fix, you can now choose which CPU core you want to run Silent Hill 2 PC on. Open the d3d8.ini file and set single core affinity to a value of 1 or higher to choose which core you would like to use. And don't worry, if the value is set to a number that is greater than the available cores on your computer, it will default to using the first core on your PC. Previously, we fixed an issue that prevented the game from saving if the hard drive was larger than 2 terabytes. There was an oversight with this fix that would still prevent some users from saving their games on large capacity storage devices. This issue is now resolved. Anisotropic filtering has been added to the project and is customizable in the d3d8.ini file. For the Pyramid Head Apartment Closet cutscene, we fixed an issue where the noise filter was being placed behind the blur of the closet bars. This issue also affects the Xbox version of the game. We fixed an issue where the black fadeout for the end of the Eddie and Laura Bullen cutscene didn't properly fill the display area of the game when played in widescreen. Now, regardless of what resolution you use, the black fadeout will always properly fill the entire display area. At the end of the cutscene where James defeats the first Lion figure and acquires the radio, his lips would pulsate after he finishes talking. I'd better take it anyway. I might need it. With this update, his lips will no longer move after he finishes speaking here. What the? I'd better take it anyway. I might need it. We've added a feature to disable the chainsaw from spawning on a first playthrough if you choose beginner or easy action difficulty, which mirrors the behavior of the console releases. We fixed an issue where the hospital carbon print paper image would not correctly display if you viewed the memo from your memos list when playing on hard or extra riddle difficulty.
the detection zone for the drawing on the wall that Laura sits above has been enlarged, so you can more easily interact with the drawing. The detection zone was incredibly difficult to interact with before, which is an issue that affects all other versions of the game. We fix an issue where lying figures would sometimes incorrectly crawl out from underneath the vehicle. When this happened, the lying figures' upper bodies would be underneath the ground, and their feet would be straight up in the air. This update alleviates this problem. We've added a feature that prevents the player from custom saving in a small selection of rooms. This is because, if you were to load back into these rooms, it would cause visual errors. For example, if you were to file load back into the room where you meet Angela for the final time, the fire would not render. This update will prevent such errors from happening. A new feature has been added that increases the blood pool sizes for slain enemies. The increased blood pool sizes will now resemble the PlayStation 2 version. We fixed the lighting transition area in Hotel Room 202-204. Before, dynamic objects such as enemies and items were incorrectly lit while in this room. The lighting levels have been restored. We've slightly thickened the long, horizontal line used in the hospital diary text to make it more legible at higher resolutions. It's a small change, but a nice one nonetheless. If you return to the back alley gate at night, behind Pete's Bullorama, James will say the lock is broken, even though the gate is clearly cracked open with no lock on it. With this update, James will now say a more suitable piece of commentary for the gate. This text string is taken from when you try to re-enter the apartments after leaving them from the Pyramid Head boss fight there. We have addressed environment flickering for several cutscenes throughout the game. For example, at the end of the Angela Graveyard cutscene, notice how the environment's fog parameters momentarily flicker before returning to their default values. The same can be seen at the end of the cutscene where you first meet Maria. This update fixes these areas, which affect all other versions of the game. Yeah, you too. So it's okay? Yeah, fine. We fixed a peculiar issue where, in the final area of the game, the fog parameters would render incorrectly if James was unequipped. Likewise, during the cutscenes before the final boss fight, the fog parameters will still be incorrect here, because James will be unequipped as the cutscene plays out. This issue has been fixed. I understand now. It's time to end this nightmare. An update for the FMV Enhancement Pack has the FMVs fully fill a 16x9 aspect ratio without stretching them, or without the use of pillar boxes. This was achieved by scaling the videos to fill the horizontal space of the composition, then cropping any verticality from them. The same method and approach of displaying the FMVs in widescreen is now done with the latest development builds of PCSX2. Additionally, the text for the ending credit videos has been redone to improve their legibility and presentation when using higher resolutions. Lastly, we ran a community contest to see what you would like to see on the dog and in monitors. When asked why Mirror the Dog was looking at blank screens, Mr. Masahiro Ito, art director of Sound Hill 2, had this to say. If I remember correctly, we couldn't have texture memory fields in PlayStation 2 for that part. Of course, we didn't want to make the screens empty, but we couldn't. So to give Mirror something to look at, and because this is a joke ending that isn't meant to be taken seriously, we ran a fun event to have you vote on what you'd like to see on these monitors. And the winning vote was to place security camera style screenshots on the television screens. Good choice. And thank you to all who participated in this event.
And that about wraps it up for what's new with the latest update for Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition. This update is now available to download for you to experience these improvements for yourself. The links and information about these downloads will be in the video description below. As always, be sure to visit the configuration and credits page of the website to send a message of support to all the programmers and modders who are working hard to make the PC version of Silent Hill 2 all the more better. And consider sending monetary support to those on the team who are accepting donations. A donation link will be beside any team member's name on the credits page who are accepting donations. And to end this video, let's briefly go over some prospective goals we have for the continuation of this project. Do note that there's no time frame for if or when we will get to these. Continue work on upscale and full screen images. As mentioned earlier in the video, we will continue upscaling the 2D full screen images to have them look in their best at higher widescreen resolutions. We hope to have all the remaining full screen images complete for the next update. This will also include having the maps properly display and function in widescreen. Restore full specularity across the game. Right now, there are areas in the game where objects should be shiny, but they're not, such as character eyeballs or the lion figures when they're out in the town during the daytime. It is possible for us to restore the specularity across the game. We just need time to properly address it. Include built-in anti-aliasing. Currently, the main reason we use Reshade is for its anti-aliasing filter. However, Reshade can be too demanding for weaker or older PCs. We'd like to include our own built-in anti-aliasing feature, that way we would not be relying on Reshade for such a feature. Restore the brightness selector. When playing in windowed mode, the brightness selector in the game's options menu does not work. This is because the PC version's brightness selector changes the gamma for your entire display, not just the game, and requires the game to be run in full screen to do so. This method of brightening the game was common practice for PC games made in the early 2000s. We want to make a feature that will brighten and darken only the game, regardless of whether or not you're playing in windowed mode. Include a built-in click and pop fix for the audio. Currently, we are using indirect sound to fix any popping and clicking for sound effect files that end prematurely. However, this doesn't fix any clicking or popping for background music and dialogue audio that ends early. We hope to create a built-in fix for this issue to cover all areas and aspects of sound within the game. Also, that way, we wouldn't be relying on indirect sound for such a feature. The Enhanced Edition team hopes you enjoy the newest update to Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition. And until the next video update, we will see you around in the foggy town of Silent Hill.